experiment, it is to perform staining of a given bacterium by differential staining technique and to Um, in this video lecture, we will be trying to understand two different staining, staining techniques. One is gram staining and the other one is going to be spore staining. So let us go with the first staining procedure, which is called as a gram staining or we call it as a differential stain. Now, what is the aim of this experiment? It is to perform staining of a given bacterium by differential staining technique and to distinguish between two major groups of bacteria that is the gram positive bacteria from the gram negative types now what is the background of this experiment bacteria are chemically different from their environment and thus can be stained in a contrasting fashion for visualization. This procedure was first developed by a Danish bacteriologist by name Hans Christian Gram in the year 1884. According to Christian Gram, bacteria can be divided into two major groups based on the staining reactions. They are gram positive bacteria and gram negative bacteria. This technique is called as differential staining since it allows the microbiologist to recognize the differences between cell types. It is perhaps the most powerful staining protocol in microbiology. Now, principle of gram staining experiment. Staining process requires four solutions that are used in a sequence. The first one is called as a basic dye, that is a primary stain like crystal violet. The second one is a mordant, which is a chemical substance that enhances the affinity between the cell and the dye, making it harder to remove the stain. The third chemical is a decolorizing agent, which can be 95% ethanol or acetone, which removes the excess dye from the stained bacterial cells. The fourth stain is a counter stain, which is called as safranin. It is also a basic dye, which is the most preferred counter stain as it provides the greatest contrast and make the cells more visible. The counter stain is a basic dye of a different color from the primary stain. So it gives the decolorized cell a different color from that of the primary stain. The gram stain is based on the capacity for some bacteria to decolorize at a faster rate than others. Bacteria that do not decolorize hold the primary stain color, whereas those that decolorize will have the color of the counter stain. Now, the basic steps or the procedures so before going to the basic steps of the procedures, let us see what are the requirements for this gram staining experiment. The first is a set of materials where we require a clean glass slide. Then we will require the Bunsen burner or the spirit lamp, microscopes, inoculating loops and bacterial cultures. The next set of requirement are the reagents. One is a crystal violet stain, grams iodine, 95% alcohol, or acetone, and saffron. Now let us see about the procedure for gram staining experiment. Now what is the first step? So step number one, we are going to talk about the smear formation by heat fixing process. So how to do the process of heat fixing? Let us see over here. So first take a clean glass slide, clean it thoroughly with alcohol, wipe it, and clean and expose to flame to kill any adhering contaminants. Coming to the next step, place a drop of double distilled water onto the center of the slide. Then we are going to transfer a loop full of culture onto the glass slide and mix it thoroughly. After mixing them, Spread the culture evenly with the inoculating loop so that it forms a thin film on the slide. So now heat fix the smear passing 
glide rapidly over the flame. So when we come to the last step, we are supposed to show the glass light onto the flame just for three or four times only so that the fixing of the organism or the culture to the slide will be heat fixed process if we show it on the flame for a long span of time then the size and shape of the organism can change so in this procedure we are able to try to we are able to understand how to heat fix the smear so now is the step two process where we are trying to understand how to do the staining process so first once we are finished with the fixing of the smear by heat process the next thing is that flood the smear with the first primary strain which is called as the crystal violet once we are done with the addition of crystal violet stand for one to two minutes allow the stain to be taken up by the bacteria so after that wash it gently wash the slide gently with few drops of the water then flood the smear with the mordant that is the Grams iodine solution. Then allow it to stand for one to two minutes. Next step is to wash gently the slide with few drops of the water. Now decolorize the slide or the stain what we have added with 95% alcohol for 10 to 20 seconds. So add drop by drop the alcohol onto the slide in such a way that the last drop which is draining out from the slide is going to have a faint color of the crystal violet. Don't decolorize excess, then the organism will not be able to take up the stain properly. Now coming to the next step is wash gently with few drops of water and blot dry it. Now we add the counter stain. So the counter stain by flooding, we add along the sl slide with saffron in for one to two minutes. Then wash gently with few drops of water. Again, blot dry it. After it, examine the slide under a low or a high power uh, microscope and oil immersion object objective so these are the steps for the preparation of the staining of the uh, organism now this is a diagrammatic form where this what we explained here by step is shown over here now in this process let us see here in the first step we are adding the crystal violet which is the primary stain stain which is added to the specimen now this picture shows you the gram positive and this is the gram negative bacteria so when we are adding the first crystal violet the both the organisms will be staining or uh, staining with the purple or the blue color type now in the second step we are adding the mordant that is grams iodine now mordant makes a dye less soluble so that it will adhere to the cell walls and here we can see that the cell is remaining purple or blue in color so what is happening over here is that in the case of gram positive bacteria they have a very thick cell wall made up of the peptidoglycan layer when we add up the crystal violet it goes into the cell wall and in the presence of the mordant that is a grams iodine there will be formation of a complex which is a crystal violet and the iodine complex within the cell wall of the bacteria now when we go to the next step where we are adding the decolorizing agent that is called as the alcohol this decolorizer will wash the stain away from the gram negative cell walls so what will happen gram positive cells will remain purple or blue in color whereas a gram negative will become colorless so when we have a closer look to understand the difference between gram positive and the gram negative once when the crystal violet and the iodine complex is formed and stays within the lipopolysaccharide layer of the gram negative bacteria and the peptidoglycan layer of the gram positive bacteria when we are adding the decolorizing agent that is an organic solvent either alcohol or acetone in the case of gram positive bacteria the peptidoglycan layer will undergo 
undergo dehydration process. So because of the dehydration process, the crystal violet and the Gram's iodine complex will be retained within the cell wall of the Gram-positive bacteria and make the organism to appear still as purple in color. Whereas in the case of Gram-negative bacteria, the cell wall outer major component is going to be the lipopolysaccharide layer. So when we add the decolorizing agent in the Gram-negative organism, the crystal violet and the Gram's iodine complex, which has been formed over here, will be washed out because it is a lipopolysaccharide layer and in presence of alcohol, there will be solubilization of the lipid components and it will release away the crystal violet and the iodine complex. So the organism is completely decolorized and it will not be having the blue or the purple color in this step. Now in the fourth process, we are going to add safranin, which is a counter stain, which will allow the dye to adhere only to the gram-negative cells because already the gram positive cells has taken up the crystal violet and the iodine and they are completely visible will be visible to us as a purple color bacteria. So that's why in the gram positive cells, they will retain or remain blue or purple in color because the crystal violet and iodine complex, which has been formed, has been locked within the peptoglycan layer during the decolorization process. Whereas in the case of gram negative bacteria, the crystal violet iodine complex has been washed away. So when we add the counter stain, it will adhere to the cell of the gram negative bacteria and they will be appearing either pink or a red in color okay so that is about the uh, explanation about the gram staining process now coming to the observation and the result gram positive bacteria as we have seen earlier in the step they take up the crystal violet and that's why they will be appearing purple or blue in color. Whereas the gram negative bacteria will be taking up the counter stain that is called as the safranin and will be appearing pink or red in color. Now there are few list of examples of bacteria for gram staining experiments. For gram positive bacteria, cocci type, the best example is Streptococcus species. And for gram negative cocci, Neisseria species can be taken as a source for the culture. Whereas for bacilli, the case of gram positive organism, it can be corny bacteria, it can be mycobacterium, it can be bacillus, or it can be clostridium species. Whereas in the case of gram negative bacilli, examples are E. coli, then Shigella, Klebsiella, and Pseudomonas. So these are the aim, principle, and procedure for us to perform the gram staining experiment. Now we will move on with the second technique called as the spore staining or we call it as a structural stain, staining process. Now what is the aim of this experiment? To stain the endospores of a given bacterium and observe it under the microscope. Now, what is the principle of this experiment? We know that endospores are the more resistant structures of certain bacteria and are known for their resistance to high temperature, radiation, desiccation, and chemical disinfectants. Hence, they play a major role in the perpetuation of bacteria forming them. The spore formation is primarily observed in two major genera. One is the bacillus and clostridium species and also in few species of sarsini. The endospores are resistant to chemical stains. However, they are stain by subjecting to heat treatment at which the cells become permeable. Once stained, the spore cells do not lose their color at normal temperature. By using two different dyes for staining, spores and vegetative scale cells can be differentiated. Spores retain primary color that is malachite green and vegetative cells get the counter stain that is the saffronin color. Malachite green staining method employs 
hot malachite green as intense stain which is not removed from the endospore by washing and safranin as a counter stain will be added thus the endospores will stain green but the remainder of the cells that is the vegetative cells or the cells without endospores will be staining and taking up light red or pink in color now coming to the requirements the requirements for this spore staining process is first we require the spore relating bacterial cultures bunsen burner a tripod stand wire gauze clean glass slides a blotting paper or a filter paper now the reagents one is one percent malachite green solution prepared in distilled water the other one is the safranin solution now coming to the procedure to perform this post staining process the first step is to prepare the smear of the bacterial culture on a grease free slides and air dry it and heat fix the sample to form the smear then this smear with a small piece of a blotting paper next step is expose the slide to a steam for 10 minutes now when we are exposing the slide to the steam for 10 minutes saturate the blotting paper with malachite green which is prepared in the aqua solution form and continue the addition of malachite green for 10 minutes during this process make sure that the blotting paper which we have placed on top of the smear is not going to undergo drying now remove the paper after 10 minutes and wash the slide gently with few drops of mm. water then counter stain the sample with safranin for 1 to 2 minutes wash the drops wash the slide with drops of water and blot it dry now observe it under low or high and oil immersion objective so these are the procedure for spore staining process now observation and results endospores will appear green and remainder of the cells or the cells without endospore that is the vegetative cells will appear light red or pink in color and these are the reference textbooks which we have followed in order to prepare this video thank you students once this video lecture is over we will show you the demonstration of how to perform the gram staining as well as the spore staining experiment have a good day thank you staining technique so we will do two different types of staining techniques today the first one is a gram staining the second one is going to be the spore staining so accordingly i have labeled even the slides also so to uh, take the samples for gram positive gram negative what we will do is that we will take a uh, some of the cultures this is one culture which is uh, staphylococcus which we have taken then so this becomes um, gram positive and one more culture we have taken that is e coli okay so we will do gram staining experiment with these two organisms and for spore staining we cannot use e coli as well as the staph because uh, they do cannot form the spore so we have to go with the organism which can produce the spore so we have Second another culture which is the bacillus. So this bacillus genera as well as Clostridium are the important uh, organisms which can produce the endospores. So first we have to prepare the smear. So for the preparation of the smear, we will take the inoculation loop. First we will uh, sterilize it in heat, and then we will be doing the smear preparation. So this is heat fixed smear preparation. So what we will do is that first we will take a drop of water and put it into the center of the glass plate okay so we are taking the solid medium cultures here we are not using the liquid broth so we have to take some drops of the water to the center of the glass plate okay so first all the three slides we are taking taking some amount of water then we will go with the first one so this is uh, one culture we will take so sterilize it thoroughly 
so you can see it has become red hot we cannot put it immediately into the culture the organisms will die so just wait for one or two seconds and then you can open the plate near the flame and wherever you find the cultures take some cultures from the plate okay then so we are going to mix the cultures with the water what we have taken here and prepare the smear here so once we have done it you can sterilize the loo and leave it for air drying <laughs> then again we'll go to the next culture so again we will wait for one or two seconds then we will open it slightly and take up the cultures from here so we have only taken water i'm just preparing the smear with the cultures so spread it evenly make a thin film so that when we add the stain we will be able to view the organ now this is the third culture we are taking for uh, for uh, staining so what we will do is that we will take some cultures and to the drop of water what we have taken just prepare the smear sterilize the loop once you have sterilized it thoroughly we can place it aside so now what we will do is that the process we finish fixing so just show it under flame just for one or one shot twice we just show it on the flame uh, i mean on the flame so that it gets heat fixed so similarly the previous slide also we have already air dry it so it must be fixed but one more time on the flame slightly we will show it so this is heat fixing of the smear step number 1 we have done so now we have prepared with the smears next step is going to be the staining process and the leave same time thing me aage pe me and the ऑन द first what we will do is that for gram staining let us take the dice so we are having two different dice to be used along with a more than so what we will do is that on a tray i have taken some mud and i have placed them so we will keep the plates So the first thing what we are supposed to add is going to be the crystal violet stain. Then we have to add the mordant, that is the grams iodine, and then we are going to add the ninety five percent ethanol and then the safranin. So that is the order of the reagents what we are supposed to add. So first what we will do is that to the uh, smear we will first flood it with the crystal violet and we have to wait for one or two minutes. Okay. so what i'll do is that i'll put one culture on one side and the other one on the other side okay. 
So this is crystal violet. So flood will have to flood it with crystal violet first. So just drop the crystal violet wherever we find the cultures. There we have made the smear. Heat fix the smear. We just add some drops of the crystal violet. And once we have added them, let us wait for one or two minutes. So just we have to see that it is spread evenly. The same thing we'll do to the other slide because the smear is present. So we have to stain properly, otherwise the dye will not be taken up by the organisms. So we have to add properly, flood it properly with the crystal violet. Okay, and just leave it for one or two minutes. Then we have to wash the uh, flooded crystal violet with the uh, water. And then we have to add the mordant. So as we've seen earlier in the video, we have seen that this is the primary stain. This is the basic dye. Crystal violet is a basic dye, which will have a positive charge with them. So uh, negative charges present on the cell wall, we interact with this dye and it will be taken up initially. So once one minute, one or two minutes is over, we have to wash it with distilled water. So this is distilled water, what we have taken. So let me wash it. So the stain just finishes and rinse it with the drops of distilled water. Now once when we have washed it, so this is the first slide. So second slide also we have to wash it so we can just add some amount of water very slowly we add it and then we are going to add the mordant that is grams iodine so this is prepared with potassium iodide and grams um, iodine solution so just add flood it flood it properly with grams iodine on the slide and then just make sure that it is completely filled with the grams iodine so similarly to the other slide also we have to flood it with grams iodine so still some stain i'm finding so i'm just washing it then we can add the grams iodine So add sufficient amount of gram iodine to the slide and then just see that it is spread evenly and then leave it for one or two minutes. Then we have to wash. Still violet and we have added the mordant. Mordant role is what it is adhering, making the crystal violet and the iodine to form a complex initially. So in the case of gram-positive bacteria, they have high amount of peptidoglycan. So when this crystal wild iodine complex is formed, it goes and gets uh, logged in between the peptidoglycan layer. So when I add the decolorizing agent, that is the um, organic solvent, 95% ethanol or acetone, there will be dehydration in the case of the peptidoglycan so once it gets dehydrated it lacks like a locking system so that the crystal violet niodin complex will get locked within the cell wall of the gram positive organism whereas in the case of gram negative organism it will undergo solubilization in presence of the decolorizing agent that is 95 percent ethanol or acetone so after adding grams iodine i'm just Washing it with water. Even here, I'm just washing it with water. Then we will add the 95% ethanol, which is a decolorizing agent. So, just few drops we shall add so that excess of the stain is not going to get washed up. So just add very slowly. 
and similarly here also we have to add the 25 percent ethanol so after addition we will just rinse once with water and then we'll go with the composting addition Now we'll add the counter stain that is safranin. So this is safranin. It's also a basic dye. They're the most preferred counter stain because it should give a contrasty difference. So that's why we are using the best uh, counter stain that is the safranin. So even in the case of the staff uh, that is the gram positive, we have to add it. And just wait for one or two minutes, and then we will go with the next step of washing and then observing it under the microscope. So now 10x, first we have to show it under the low objective 10x, then we have to put it at 45 or 40x, and then 100x. So when you're viewing it under the 100x, we have to view it and as oil immersion. So a drop of mineral oil has to be kept on top of the light and it has to be focused under the microscope so we have added saffron in. and then we will wash it with distilled water so let me wash it i'll first wash this stuff Just wash it thoroughly. And this is the other sample. Just also wash it thoroughly. Then with the help of a tissue paper, blot it dry. So just with the tissue paper, the other side, it is not dry. Excess of the chemicals which are there, we will get wiped out. So clean it thoroughly. This is the other slide. So blot it dry, so that any water left out will be drained out. Are you able to see it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So now the two slides for gram staining, we have prepared it. So we are supposed to focus them under the microscope 10x, 45x, and then the 100x under oil immersion. So, basically, they have not taken crystal by now. Bunch of them, dark is counted. Black, gray, round, round. So we will go with the spore staining uh, steps, how to do it. So first we have prepared the smear. So after preparation of the smear, on top of the smear, we have to keep a piece of the blotting paper. So I'll just keep a piece of blotting paper and then I'll take it. So this normal piece of paper is also good for us. So what we will do is that we will take a piece of this paper and keep it on top of the smear or whatever we have prepared and first let us wet it this is malachite green one percent which we have prepared so first we will wet it and then we'll put it on the clay so now this what we have prepared i'm going to put it on the flame 
so that in presence of this heat you can see you can see it is got spread and uh, i am going to add some more and make sure that you are flooding it properly with malachite green and uh, uh, slowly what will happen is that the chemical which we are adding makes it permeable so that nano spores are dormant they are resistant so in presence of this heating process by showing it under the flame what will happen that there will be permeability of the dye to the spores they will start to take it up and when you are putting it on the flame make sure that you are the malachite green in such a way that it is going not, not to dry it up the paper which we have kept on top should not undergo drying so we have to take care of that one so once we find that it is undergoing some drying we are supposed to add immediately the malachite green to this top nicely we have to flood it and then with this step we have to do it for 10 minutes so after heat fixing the smear we are going to keep a piece of blotting paper on top of the wire gauze or you can do it on steam also so uh, then on top of it add 1% malachite green so again i'm adding some more drops so the procedure is that when you are adding malachite green it will be taken up by the spore then we have to after 10 minutes is over we have to remove the blotting paper after removing the blotting paper we have to rinse or wash the slide so that the malachite green anything is present excess will be washed out then again we are going to do counter stain so we'll add safranin so in presence of safranin um it will be taken up by the vegetative cell or the cells which have not still formed the spores or which has released the spores so such type of cells if they are there they will take up the counter stain that is safranin and they should appear pink in color and the spores should be green in color by taking this malachite with the ten minutes process don't allow the paper to dry so always wet it and keep it moist Now I will remove the paper. Just on to the sides. Just I am removing the paper and dropping it. Little bit more. So I am done. so we are done with it i have removed the paper so now we are supposed to wash it so we are going to wash it with distilled water and then we are going to do the next step of adding the counter stain so you can see we are added we'll wash it just slowly add the water and remove the excess stain which is present you can see the smear is there in the center so 
Now I am done. Now we will add the counter stain that is sapphire. So this is saffron. Just add, flood it, flood it properly with saffron and give one or two minutes time for the stain to be taken by the vegetative cells or the cells which has released the spores or the cells which has not yet formed the spores. Just one to two minutes. So um, as I said earlier, counter stain, generally we prefer to use saffron in. So it gives a contrasting color. Just nicely we will flood it and we, are, we will wash it with this thing. Maybe it now. When extra stain is there, we can wash it off. So we are done with the staining also. Now we have to focus it under the microscope. So we put the slide for it to air dry for some time so that excess of water present will be dried up. Then we will focus it under the microscope. So do you have any doubts or do you want to ask anything? You can ask us. Yes, did you follow the steps? Should 